everybody, I'm the Almighty Zentaco, and today we're going to be learning how to implement a double jump and a wall jump for our platform game. Um, if you don't know how to make a platformer, I have a pretty in-depth tutorial series on it. I'm going to go ahead and put a link on the screen now. Click that if you want to find out more about it. But uh, if you already know, then go ahead and follow along. So this is going to be using the platform movement object. Uh, what we have here is the player itself, which is just this little box. We have the player sprite, which is going to follow along. He has his different animations and stuff. Um, this is an FX, it's a cloud. <clears throat> We're going to be using that uh, to sort of have a, create an effect in the air whenever he jumps. Um, and this here is a layer object, which I am using to do a sort of a cool little scroll effect in the background for that cloud. I'm not going to explain that. I might do that at some later date. Lastly, we have the wall detector object. Now this wall detector object is going to follow the uh, player object along. Now the difference is, it is the same X and Y. I'm sorry, no, it's the same uh, Y height, but it is on the X uh, size, it is two pixels bigger. And that's because we want it to be over, kind of spilling over one pixel to the right and one pixel to the left, so we can use to detect collisions with walls. Um, so we're going to go ahead and drop this up here. We want to make sure all these things are not visible at start because we do not want to see them. So yeah, we just have this guy and he walks around right now. Um, he kind of has this cool little bounce animation, but he doesn't jump or anything. So to get this working, we're going to click on our platform, um, or actually our player object. We're going to add <clears throat> a alterable value. We're going to call this jump. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new section here. We're going to comment this so we can sort of separate it. This is going to say uh, double jump. So the first thing we want to do is find out if the player is on the ground. So we can do that with the platform movement object. Go to object state, object is standing on ground. <clears throat> uh, if that is true, we want to set the value of jump to two. Okay. Um, and then we need to do a jump. So this is going to be a keyboard event upon pressing a key, the X key. And um, we also want to find out if the alter value of jump is greater than zero because we don't want him to jump if that value is zero. So when this happens, then we are going to let him jump. Um, though we're going to do one more thing here, another keyboard event. Repeat while key is pressed. And that's going to be the X key. And we're going to check the object state to see if it's jumping. If this is happening, then we're, the player is holding jump in air, and it'll increase the height of the jump. So uh, anyway, <clears throat> first we have line 13. Line 13 is where we initiate the jump. So under the platform movement object, go to on user input and select jump. We also want to go to the alterable values under the player object and subtract one from jump. And over here, this is uh, where we hold jump in air. So go to the platform movement object, go to variables, no, sorry, go to on player, uh, on user input. <clears throat> user is holding jump in the air. Now we need to do some animation so this guy looks, uh, you know, he's not just standing there while he jumps. Go to the platform movement object. We're gonna check the states of jumping and falling. If either of these are true, then we're gonna change the animation of the player sprite to be uh, the jumping animation. Actually, sorry, we have a jumping and a falling animation. Go ahead and drag that down there and then just edit it. All right, so what that did is while he's jumping, we're doing the jumping animation. While falling, we're doing the falling animation. <clears throat> so um, this should work. Let's test it and see. Nothing happened. What did I do wrong? Upon pressing X, jump equals zero. Oh. That's right, that's why. Not jump equals zero, jump is greater than zero. I selected the wrong thing. Don't be like me, don't select the wrong thing. All right, let's try it now. Yep, we get exactly two jumps. Um, and that really is all there is to a double jump. If you increase the size of that jump number, uh, whenever you touch the ground, when we reset it, it'll give him more jumps. You could have, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, who cares? Um, <clears throat> But we're going to go ahead and section this off real quick. This next part is going to be wall jump. 
Anyway, though, I want to add an effect uh, to to the jump. So we have this little thing here called a, a cloud FX or FX cloud. It has a value called trans, which is currently zero. <clears throat> We're going to uh, add this effect to the double jump real quick. So insert a new event. And this is going to be an always event. We are always going to set the transparency of this object, of this cloud object, to its trans value. So go to, uh, where is it? Not visibility. Effect, compatibility, set semi-transparency. And go ahead and grab the value of trans under that object. <clears throat> uh, we need to also always set uh, the value of trans up. We always need to add to it. So always add one to the value of trans. Whenever the value of trans is above 200, we're going to destroy that object. So a new event here. See if trans is greater than 200. And if it is, we're going to destroy it. Okay. <clears throat> um, I think that's everything. Oh no, we got to create this thing. So whenever we jump, let's do this here. We're going to copy this event. Drop it down here. Okay, except we're going to change this here where it says jump is greater than zero. We want that to be jump equals, let me think about that, two. Yeah, jump equals one. That should be right. Uh, delete jump though, and delete all this. We don't want any of that stuff to happen. <clears throat> we just wanted the condition. We don't want the event. So we're going to go ahead and change that event. We're going to add a create new object. That object is going to be the cloud FX, and we're going to make that spawn relative to our player sprite, and we're going to spawn it at its feet. So if everything was done properly, then now we're going to have a cloud when we jump in the air. Nope, I did that totally wrong. Why did that happen? Okay, uh, to fix this, where this is being called out of order, essentially, we're going to go ahead and grab number 19, and we're going to stick this event all the way at the top. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and look at it. Okay, so we do get this sort of little jump thing. It looks pretty terrible. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this a little bit better. Um, we are going to, under the always event where we are messing with this, this cloud object, we're gonna make it grow. We are always going to set the scale to the current X scale. And we're gonna add 0 0.1. <clears throat> One for uh, max quality. And whenever it gets spawned, which was up here. We're going to give it a random, um, a random angle, so it's not all exactly the same. So set angle to random 360. One for quality. That's a bit nuts. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and modify that a bit. We're going to add three to transparency instead of one, and uh, we are going to speed or slow down the rate at which this grows. We're going to make it zero. Uh, it was uh, we did what we had zero point one, so we're going to have zero point zero five, one for quality. There, much better. Okay, so that concludes the double jump. Now we need to do the hard part, which is going to be the wall jump. Wall jump is a little bit more difficult than double jump. <clears throat> All right, so now we need to do the wall jump. Um, this is a little bit more difficult. The first thing we need to do is set up an always event. We need this detector object to follow the player. So we're always going to set the position of this object relative to the position of our player object. Um, let's go ahead and uncheck or we'll make it so that these are both visible at start. We want to look at them real quick. Okay, as you can see, um, <clears throat> it is overlapping, or it's actually one pixel bigger than, than the uh, player object to the right and the left. It's also a little higher above it, uh, but that's fine. All right, so now we want to check to see if we are colliding with a wall. So we're going to add a new uh, event here. And this is going to be under the detector, collisions overlapping a backdrop. We need to go ahead though and also check to make sure that the player is not on the ground. So check the object state, object is standing on ground, and negate that. When that happens, we want to set the alterable value of, oops, wrong one, under the player, <coughs> of jumps, 
back to two. So essentially we're resetting the jumps to our max jump, which is two. Let's test it and see if it works. Yep, we can do a wall jump. Um, so if you're happy with that, you can end it right there. Um, but I'm not happy with that. I think that looks kind of crappy. So there's some stuff we're going to need to do. So we want, essentially to make this look better, we need the player to be able to, when he jumps, uh, push off the wall. <clears throat> so to do that, we need to go ahead and create another alterable value under our player, and we're going to call that direction. Now normally if I had a direction value, I would have right be one and left be negative one. We're going to reverse this. So uh, up here in the PMO code, where we have repeat while right arrow and repeat while left arrow is pressed, this is where we are changing the direction of the player. Um, this is where we need to also set the direction value. So under right arrow, we want to set the direction value to be negative one. And then we want the inverse. So set the direction value to one under uh, left. <clears throat> okay, so back down here, this is going to be where we um, push off the, the wall, okay? So this is gonna be a keyboard event upon pressing a key, that's the X key. And also, if we are currently overlapping a backdrop with this object and we are not on the ground, then we wanna push off the wall. <clears throat> So we will go to the platform movement object and we're gonna do something uh, called set additional X velocity. We're gonna set that to be 500 and we're gonna multiply that by the value of direction. And the reason we're doing that is because um, <clears throat> the, the X uh, velocity, additional X velocity, anything positive is, is right movement, anything negative is leftward movement. So let's go ahead and test this now. Okay, I mean it worked, but he flew all the way off the screen. Let's go ahead and edit this. Let's make this something more like three, 300. Actually, we're gonna leave it 500 because we're gonna decay this. Um, okay, so we want to reset this value whenever he's on the ground. So let's check to see if the player is on the ground. Object state, object standing ground. If that is true, we are going to set this additional X velocity to zero. So that's under variables, set additional X velocity, make that zero. <clears throat> but we want to decay it while we're in the air too, or at least I do, you might not want to, but I'm gonna do that. So always, <clears throat> so we're always going to go to variables, set additional X velocity, grab the value of additional X velocity and multiply that to zero by 0 0.95. This will give us a pretty good decay As you can see, I push off the wall and it doesn't go super crazy far and it's very smooth with the way that it decays. Okay. <clears throat> so um, there's a couple more things I wanna do while we're on the wall here. We also want to change the animation of this uh, player object here. I have an animation for sliding down, um, but we also want to sort of, uh, we want to have a, a lower max Y velocity when we're on the wall so that when we're sliding down the wall, he slides slowly and we don't fall at the full speed. So we will go to the variables under the uh, PMO object and we're gonna set maximum Y velocity to something like 200. Now by default, it is 800. <clears throat> so um, whenever we do actually jump, we want to have the value go back to 800. So uh, under here where we do the, the push off wall event, we are also going to set the value of maximum Y velocity to 800. Also, when we are touching the ground, we are gonna set the max velocity back to 800 as well. 
just in case uh, the player could slide down the wall and never actually jump. So. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and add one more event to make sure that we, uh, we clear that changed max Y velocity when you're not on the wall. Very simply, we are going to do this. We're going to say collisions overlapping a backdrop and negate it. So whenever this is not overlapping a backdrop, we're going to set the maximum Y velocity to 800. Okay, that pretty much covers the whole thing. I don't think there's anything else uh, that we need to do to have this function properly. So um, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you found it educational. If you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to leave them down below. Or you can go ahead and look in the uh, description here and go to my Discord channel. There's lots of people there, and they're willing to help you out, and I also hang out there. Um, I think that's everything, guys. So you all have a fantastic day, and I will see you guys in the next video. Later. Thank you.